Our next question. I, I always, I always, it's the first question I ask when I'm hiring a new secretary is, do you take dictation? Our next question, and by the way, they call them assistants now, but our next question sent to Corny Drive through at gmail.com. Who, the people that take dictation? The dictators? Well, secretaries. You don't hear anyone called the secretary anymore. You don't? Somehow that's become like a ostracized word. No, wait, no, that's completely incorrect. No, I'm serious. I just heard, I turned on the TV yesterday and heard from the Secretary of State. Clearly a different type of secretary. Well, well you said they don't use the word secretary anymore. They really don't in the business setting. They call the former secretary the assistant now. Oh, how about paid lap whore? Let's get another question here on the show. Sounds like you know some of the people I've worked with. This question was sent to Corny Drive. I tell you, the first, first secretary I hired, I said, come in here and let's get something straight between us right now. And I didn't have any further problems. All right. Well, we may have to watch a video together after this show just to remind us what we can and can't say on the air. Jim? This next question was sent to Corny Drive through a Gmail. There's the Secretary of the Treasury, too. <laughs> yes. Secretary of the Treasury keeps all the money. And of course, with the NWA, Jim Barnett, the Secretary of Cock. No, come on now. I'm kidding. No, he was the Secretary of the. Uh, he, was he was the, the Secretary Treasurer. He was the Treasurer. Yes. That's right. This next question, which I've been so desperately trying to get to, <laughs> was sent to Corny Drive Through at gmail.com from Charlie in Starkville, Mississippi. <sighs> MJF was recently asked what wrestler influenced him the most. MJF said, quote, before me, I'm going to say who would equal the ability to get a visceral reaction from the crowd was Roddy Piper. Piper made me fall in love with wrestling. What are your thoughts on MJF's take on Piper? I can see that, and I think it's it's entirely uh, uh, justified. And I, I mean, I've said this before. I was, Piper didn't come along until I was... Well, Piper didn't come along anywhere I could see him on video until 1979. Uh, then not only did I get to see him live in, in Cincinnati when Crockett opened up that town, but also you could start getting the tapes and everything. So I was already 18, 19 years old, so I can't say I was a fan when I was a kid. I was already smart to the business, but that made me a fan of Piper's even more because I could... At that time, I had some frame of reference of how good he was. Um, and I can see the similarities in in wh the, the verbal ability. Actually, let's be honest, MJF's verbal ability and vocabulary, at least, exceeds Roddy Piper's. But what he's talking about is the genuineness of the, the delivery and that you could believe Piper and that he could get heat in an ice flow. Um, and, you know, before Jericho latched on to him and made him the, you know, the swirly king, that's where MJF was heading. Hopefully, if he could ever get away from Jericho, uh, if he's not the albatross that's around poor uh, seafaring Maxwell Jacob Friedman's neck uh, forever, maybe he can get to that again. But I can see where, because Piper made you believe he was one of those guys that his mission was, even if you don't believe in the wrestling business, I want you to believe in me. Piper was one of those guys when I was a kid, even though his prime had been a few years earlier, there were enough videos and people remembered it, and he was on the cartoons for us kids. But really, it was like Piper and Flair were the two heels that the kids in the playground wanted to behave like, not just be like. Yeah. <laughs> How many Roddy Piper fans, show of hands out there. How many Roddy Piper fans? <laughs> went through a phase, a stupid phase, where you started acting like Roddy Piper in school. Which made no <laughs> sense. When all of a sudden you're talking like this, why is he pinching his ear while he talks? We don't know. No one understood any of that, but every Roddy Piper fan does. Every Flair fan goes through a phase where you kind of just want to strut around a little bit. Don't even do the full woo, but you know how you would do the half woo? Like the woo, you know, the low woo. Yeah, yeah. Piper Ooh. and Flair had that. There aren't and too Piper many guys also, like... just when you think you know all the answers, I change all the questions. And I'm, you know, he, he made more, got more mileage out of I'm Roddy Piper and you're not than Chevy Chase did when he originated it. But it was just the way he did things. 
and it's interesting too. I got to think eventually MJ will be, <laughs> will be able to get, I mean, this has to end him and Jericho. I, we'll, we'll talk about it on the show, what they're going to do on the pay-per-view, what I fear they may do based on the way they're setting this up. But eventually MJF has to get away. It's not really Albatross as much as he's stuck on the beach with a beached whale. And eventually you either find your way around it or you cut right through and you or, get off the beach. Or sometimes you maybe just sit there and play in its shade. But the thing with MJF, going under the assumption he'll be doing good things again with other people soon, I think he's one of those guys that has that ability. That as AEW picks up in popularity, which it should with the increase of stars coming in, that kids will see someone like MJF and that could be the next heel they impersonate on a playground. Except I don't know if the kids will get all the words he uses. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Bud is easy to understand. Well, Bud's easy to understand. Yeah, in some playgrounds, it's easy to smoke. But Bud is easy to understand. I think they will be... Uh... We don't encourage that. No, no, not See, with the children. See, you're always getting on me for telling people to tie their children behind the rad power bikes, and then here you are pushing the drugs. We don't want the kids getting on the marijuana pills. No. At a young age. Stay off those pills. That's what, that's what Nick Goulas asked. I don't know who it was. I saw Michael say... Michael nothing. Hayes says it was him. Well, no, listen to me. Um, it was about Michael Hayes and the Freebirds, but I saw Michael St. John at Bobby's funeral, and he was one of the announcers or somebody. Maybe it was Tom Renesto, the booker. Bobby Eaton told me the story originally. Michael Hayes was not in the room, and Bobby worked for Nick longer than anybody. But Nick asked somebody in his office, said, is them Freebirds on them marijuana pills? We, ju- we got to because they wanted to play the rock and roll music when they come out, and that's just crazy. Do you think Nick asked George for advice when dealing with younger people? Like, Georgie, <laughs> what, are, <laughs> what are they up to? You know, do you think like he sought out someone else's well, advice? Daddy, I tell you, <laughs> I think, you know, just like when we stop and, and we had sandwiches and we had a little picnic on the way to the town last night, I, I think the boys think you're really great. Uh-huh. 